It was at a very difficult time in my life. I was 16 years of age. And, and my parents had got divorced. And for various circumstances, reasons, my my I was not allowed to see my father anymore. Um, the courts had decided that I should not see him till I was 21 years of age. And I was very broken-hearted at this time. And I went, uh, one day, I, I came to a place where I decided that I did not wish to live anymore. Uh, and so I made a decision to kill myself on the Saturday. And you know, looking back, we never know what we would or would not have done. But I had made this decision very calmly. I was not emotional about it. And I had gone to the pharmacy and I had purchased a poison which I had put in my room. But I decided before I died, I wanted to see my father one more time, even though I was not allowed to see him. And I knew where he was staying, and so I went to see him at his house. But when I arrived there, he was not there. And so I sat down on the steps outside to wait for him to come. And as I said, I was not feeling any emotion. I was completely calm. I was just waiting for him to come home so that I could see him one more time. And as I was sitting there, I began to feel around my shoulders a very heavy weight. It felt very warm and comforting as if somebody was putting a blanket around my shoulders, a heavy blanket. It was, it was like so soft and comforting. And I don't know how I knew, but I knew that it was God's love. And as I felt this physical weight on my shoulders, I became aware that I had a Father God who loved me. Oh, I felt small. I felt like I was the size of my thumb. 
Well, Bannon, I felt I felt I felt like I was only the size of my thumb. I felt very small. And the love of God was so enormous, completely surrounding me. And So that was more than 40 years ago, and I never doubted that the Father loves me. I never doubt. Yeah. Doubted. Yeah. I never had a doubt that the Father loves me. Yeah. I never had a doubt that the Father loves me. Because on that day, he gave me a revelation of the Father's love. So, all the years that I was a Christian, I lived knowing that I have a Heavenly Father who loves me. But one day, some years ago, God began to speak to me about being his child. It's one thing to understand that he is our father. It's another thing to understand that we are his children. It's a bit different. It's like here are my two hands. And the view from this hand to here, not the same as from here to here. It's how I look. So depending on which perspective we have, we will see it slightly differently. So I had a good understanding that God is my father. But I did not yet have a good understanding that I am his daughter. So one day I was spending time with him. And he spoke to my heart and he said, You do not know how to be a daughter. And I was so shocked, and it really hurt me that God would say that to me. Because I didn't understand what he meant. And I said to him, but God, I love you with all my heart. Why do you say you don't know how to be a daughter? And then you said to me, when you come to me, you begin to serve. When you come to me, eh? you, you just begin to serve me. You serve me. Like a servant, you serve. 
So he gave me a picture of of a table set with food and that when I come I just start to serve the food. And he said, why don't you sit down and eat with me and fellowship with me at the table? Why do you only serve the food? And with this figure, it began to show me the difference. Because the daughter of a house or the son of a house will sit at the table and eat father. But the servants will serve the food and not sit at the table. And I felt like God said, a sour daughter will come and eat with me. A sour daughter will come and eat with me. And I saw that God desires our fellowship. He doesn't just want us to serve him. He wants us to spend time with him. And I felt that God said that he appreciates my service, but what he really loves is my company. And See, what I do for God will never be as important as how much I love him. And so this encounter with God began to change my reason for what I do. Because maybe before I served God because I felt this is what I have to do. And now I began to want to do things for him because I love him. But then I also learned that I don't have to do things for him. I can just be with him. And so, yes, it's Although it is good to do things for God, it is also good just to be with Him. And to enjoy His company. And this changed how I experienced my relationship with God. Since that time, it's maybe, I can't remember exactly, maybe 10 years, I became much more conscious that I am his daughter. So I live my life. Yes. So I live my life now much more with an awareness that I am a princess in his kingdom. 
And I became more conscious of who I am as a person who is a child of God. And it changed how I lived my life here on the earth. Because I understand that I carry something of God's kingdom that I can give to other people. Now, right in the beginning, Hillary made a comment that I look like my father. And this is true for each one of us. We look very different to each other, but we all look like our Heavenly Father. And I find it very interesting that even though we physically look very different, yet we have a resemblance to one another. And even though we don't speak the same language, earthly language, we share the heavenly language. And so we find we can spend time with a Christian from another culture and yet we will find that we have a lot in common. Now we can see that we are in the same way. We are in the same way. Because together we are God's family. Hello, let's go. And so we are brothers and sisters, and we share so much together. And together. So, as we know, we are all living in pretty difficult times. And we have some understanding of why it is like this. You remember we talked about how when um, Adam and Eve sinned against God, there was a disconnection from him that also caused the disconnection in the whole of the earth. Yeah. And so there has been a lack of alignment in the earth that God made, but the alignment is not how he planned. And so there were many things wrong around us. We see that things are wrong in human relationships and in the earth and the environment. And every single problem that we every single problem that we see around us, we can see that it originates from this lack of connection. And because people are living their lives apart from the wisdom and love of God, they do not have understanding of how to live. 
And so we see a lot of dysfunction on the earth. And we are very sad because of the abuse and the wrong things that we see. And many of the things that we see are extremely sad. We see sad things happening to people, sad things happening to the environment, sad things happening to animals, sad things happening to nature. And these things can be extremely upsetting and they can make us very heavy hearted. I don't know how much you heard in Myanmar of the situation that happened last week where a police officer um, killed a black man in America, George. Yeah, And there has been a very strong reaction internationally with people um, marching and protesting and rioting as a result. And we are watching our whole world be affected by coronavirus. And the impact on people's lives and on the economy is terrible. These things are extremely burdensome to the heart. And if we are not careful, we can just join with everybody else in feeling these very heavy negative emotions. But you know, Jesus, just before he went to the cross, he spoke to his disciples. And he said this, he said, Peace, I leave with you, my peace I give to you. And then he said, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do you know that Jesus said these words knowing that within the next 24 hours he would die. He knew that he would suffer a terrible death. He knew that he would be tortured and experience a lot of pain. He knew that the authorities would have no mercy on him. He knew that his disciples would be scattered. And he also knew that the nation of Israel was going to be crushed by the Roman heel. Yeah, 
He knew that within a short time after his death on the cross, the Romans would come in and destroy Israel. In 70 AD, the temple was destroyed and the people of Israel were scattered throughout the world. So Jesus was not naive about the context in which he said these words. You know, sometimes we say, oh, you know, this is very nice, these words in the Bible, but they are not relevant for our circumstance. ไอ้ใช่จริงๆเราว่าดิโลเทนๆมั้ยฮะดิจันทร์สามารถดิสโลนี่บาราตะแกก้าวเลยแต่มันกู้ได้อะฉินนี่เนี่ยบลูไซม
And then gave me the revelation that if you are a son or a daughter, it is how you are. Because we are aware of the times that we live in. And we know what to do because we receive wisdom from God. And so we are equipped by His Holy Spirit to make a difference in the time that we are in. We receive heavenly resources and we release those around us. You see, Jesus, when he was on earth and he knew that in 24 hours he will die, do you think he had natural peace? What is the natural response if you are afraid that you are going to die? What is your natural response? Will you be peaceful? What do you think? We, we are well equipped with a flight response. This is how to protect us and keep us safe when we're in danger. Go, go, go. Attachment, go, go. Nila, you don't have to do that much. If you are threatened by danger, you will either fight or flee. You will run away or you will fight it. Uh, five flight reaction, look at one. I love you. Better than any she will go up and I came a lot. I'm a good puppy. I'm a lot of no market. And this isn't even conscious, it just happens. Our body releases adrenaline and we know what to do. This is the natural human response uh, to danger. And we must remind ourselves that Jesus at that time was living in a natural human body. So naturally, his body would react to the stress that he was under. And yet, he says, my peace I give you. So where did he get that peace? You see, we feel peaceful when everything is going well around us. But Jesus was peaceful when everything was wrong around him. Naturally, we respond to our environment. But we are not natural people. We are the sons and daughters of God. And so we respond to a different environment. The kingdom of heaven is with us and we respond 
ကောင်းကြည့်နိုင်ငံတော့ကျွန်တော်နဲ့အတူရှိတယ်ကျွန်တော်တို့ကအလုံးဆုံးပြန်ရ And this is why just like Jesus who could be peaceful when everything was wrong we too can be peaceful when everything is wrong ဘခင်ရေရှုကလည်းအလုပ်ပဲပေါ့နော်အာအရာကတ်သေးမာယွင်းနေနောင်ကြီးတဲ့ခြင်းတဲ့တုံ့ပြန်နေ We don't have to participate with what is happening around us. And in actual fact, we have authority from God to change the atmosphere around us. So when you see for example that there is a lot of fear in a group of people we can release love and peace. We don't do this through psychology we do it supernaturally. Because we connect with our father and we receive heavenly resources have you seen before like when a small child is afraid and parents come to the child pardon i i, I didn't hear it Have you seen when a, a small child is afraid and oh. then the parents comfort the child? The presence of the parents takes away the fear that the child is experiencing. Yeah. Even though the circumstance didn't change. So for example, let's say the child is afraid of dog. And the parents picks the child up and then the child feels safe even though the dog is still there. Uh, so that's how it is for us. Even though the scary situation didn't change, we feel safe because we have our, our relationship with Father God. And then because I feel peaceful and secure, I can extend that to other people. So maybe you've been in a situation where there was a group of people who were angry. And then just one person comes into that situation and calms everybody down. Did you ever see this before? I've seen it. For example, maybe there's a group of people that are very angry and then just one person comes and says the right words and helps the whole group to calm down. So we are equipped by God to do this because of who we are in Him, what we bring, we can share. But it comes from an understanding of who we are. And that I do not need to join in with whatever is happening around me. I can rather connect with my father and his kingdom. So 
Because actually we live in two worlds. We live in the natural world here on the earth. And we also live in the heavenly realm. ခန်းကြီးနေအခန်းကတက္ကနေတစ်ဆယ်ကိုကျွန်တော်ဖတ်ပါမယ်အဲ့တင်တို့ဒီအထက်ကလောဂိတရားသူလိုက်ရီအာ
uh, Craig, Craig and I, we went out for the day and we had pulled over on the side of the road to look at something. And then when we wanted to go, Craig began to pull the car out back onto the road, but he didn't see that there were car coming towards him. And so he made a mistake. He did the wrong thing. He should have noticed the car, but he didn't. And he began to pull the car out. And the person who was coming towards him immediately put their hand on the veto and stop. <laughs> and when Craig saw, he stopped straight away and the person was able to drive past us. So Craig made a mistake. He did the wrong thing. But he didn't do it on purpose. And when he realized, he stopped straight away. And but the other person was very, very angry. <laughs> she put her hand on the hood and she went, BAP! <laughs> and then she stopped her car and she put her window down and she shouted at Craig. And then she drove away very fast. And in actual fact, her anger was out of proportion to what Craig had done wrong. What we saw was that she was extremely reactive in the situation. Something happened and she reacted to it. And when Craig and I were talking about it afterwards, we said, first of all, she is probably feeling very stressed because of coronavirus and the situation in the UK. Maybe she had some other problems that were disturbing her. And so when one thing was wrong in her environment, she had a very extreme reaction. And it was very unpleasant. Now, thinking about her, she actually probably didn't realize that she had a choice to be different. She just reacted to what happened. But as the sons and daughters of God, we always have a choice to be different. We do not need to react to the things that are wrong around us. We can respond with a kingdom attitude. And we know what these attitudes are because they are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Those 
We do not have these qualities just naturally. But we do have them as sons and daughters of God. <clears throat> and this, this is why God has given us his Holy Spirit so that we can adapt to his nature rather than our natural nature. ကျွန်တော်တို့ <laughs> And so one of the reasons why we have been given the Holy Spirit is to help us learn how we should behave as God's sons and daughters. So just because of who we are, we can release a different atmosphere. We can bring calm to a situation. But in order to do this, we have to live conscious of the kingdom of heaven. And so what I taught my children when they were small is I used to say to them, between an action and a reaction, there is a pause. So something happens, and then there's a response to the thing that happened, but in between, this moment when I have a choice. So, for example, if let's say David shouts at me, he wouldn't, but imagine he did. <laughs> shout? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't shout at me, but imagine you did. So David shouted at me, I could shout back at him. And the next minute we have a big argument. That's one scenario. Uh, that's one scenario. Yeah. The other scenario would be David shouts at me and I think, wow, why is David so angry? Maybe he has a problem. And so I don't just react to him. I respond to the situation. And I bring God's loving perspective to it. But now we back to the whole now we come back to the whole story of the healing of the heart, because if I have pain in my heart, it is for me to respond to the situation. And so this is why we need to stay close to God in all these situations. And the other thing when we see that there is a negative atmosphere, and we look and we, we are aware of it and we do not wish to participate with it. Let's say everybody is feeling very um, angry and I'm not going to join them in being angry. But 
but I can do even more than this. I can release the peace of the kingdom of heaven into the situation. And so let's say I, I, I arrive in a situation where the atmosphere, there is a lot of tension and anger. Straight away I can say I release the peace of Jesus into the situation in Jesus' name. And I don't even need to say it out loud. I can just pray it quietly. And then I can very quickly connect with my father and say, Father, what would you like me to do? And if we carry the atmosphere of heaven, we will confront the atmosphere of the earth and change it. And so this is how we can make a difference in our environment. It all comes out of relationship with Father. Living conscious that we are not just ordinary human beings on the earth. But we are the supernatural sons and daughters. Do you hear me, David? No, we, we missed. Uh, okay, I said we, we are the supernatural sons and daughters of our Father yeah. living on the earth. And this is one reason why we should study the life of Jesus when he walked on earth. Because he demonstrated with his life how we could live as well. If you look at Jesus, you'll see that he was never reactive to what was happening. He always responded with a kingdom perspective. And even when he was confrontational, he did it with wisdom. When you read the Gospels, you can see that he knew exactly what he was doing. And so he lived very mindfully. And he was thoughtful about what he did. And we see how he would take time to go and be with his father. He was not just driven by what was happening around him. But he listened to what his father said. And and that is why he said, everything I see the Father do is what I do, and everything the Father says is what I say. Because even though he was walking on the earth, he kept that close connection with the Father. And so as we walk on the earth, he gave us a model for how we can live as well.
Okay, let's take a short break, David. Yeah. Uh, take a short break. One minute. How many minutes? Ten. Ten minutes. Oh, yeah. Ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. And we'll join again just now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.